you hear me at the back, okay? I'm testing the official candidate mic. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brian Lee. I'm the president of the Cox Leadership Forum. And to get us started, I'm going to ask Luann Whitmarsh to bring you greetings on behalf of our partner, the Kirby Center. Well, welcome, everyone, and welcome to the Kirby Center. I know this call is Brian. We have to move that. Let's put that up. The Kirby Center believes in knowledge and engagement in all areas of life. We are delighted to co host today with the Calgary Leadership Forum. We are known for advocacy, and this partner fits for our mission. Keeping citizens engaged and in their own community and in their lives and for future planning is what we're all here to do. I just wanted to make a couple of announcements so that you know where things are. We have uh, coffee and juice and um, some snacks available. You can purchase them at the back. If you are looking for the women's uh, washroom, it's over here to my left, and the men's washroom is over here on the right. Please enjoy your day today. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce my friend and colleague, Brian Lee. For the past seven years now, the Calgary Leadership Forum has become the gold standard for well-organized, independent, nonpartisan debates and forums at every level of public life. To moderate today's mayor's candidate today, I'm pleased to introduce the former member of Calgary City Council and member of the Legislature of the Legislative uh, um, Assembly sorry, of Alberta, an author, a professional speaker in the field of healthcare patient satisfaction, and the founder of Calgary Leadership Forum. Please join me in welcoming Brian's podium. innocent audience. <laughs> Reminds me when I was 23, I was getting ready to run for city council the first time, and I got invited to speak to the ladies of Dillery of the Historical Society of Balzac. I was so excited, I prepared my speech, I practiced it in the car on the way out. The chair lady came up to me, she was so pleased, she said, Mr. Lee, because you came out and spoke, all eight of our members showed up. I did my presentation, most of them stayed away. At the conclusion, they passed the hat and they adjourned. And afterwards, the chair lady came back and said, Mr. Lee, we're so excited. You realize because you spoke to us today, next year, we can afford to have a good speaker. <laughs> so perhaps the next debate, you can get a good moderator. Well, this is an historic election. It's the first time we've waited. We're going to have a, a, a mayor now for four years. This is debate number 20, by the way, that the Calgary Leadership Forum has hosted over the past six, actually seven years now. And I can remember one of the candidates up front being on the stage when we had that first mayoralty debate way back when. Issues matter. There's so much happening in the city. There's a question of public art, huge unemployment, Clear Strand Bridge not being built across the Weasel Head. There's an issue very just this morning about Amazon announcing two days ago that they're looking for a head office to employ 50,000 people. And by the way, I think we have room for them. So history is alive in our times, and we're going to hear from the candidates about their vision for a citizen-driven Calgary. That is our theme for the presentation. Justice Louis Brandon said a very long time ago, he said, the, word, the most important political office is that of private citizens. So what I like about elections is, this is when we take back power from those in power, and we decide who's going to get it next. And that's what you're going to get a chance to do with this first uh, Non-special interest Maryland debate. We have eight candidates who we find are going to be here. I think we have seven here so far. We're thrilled about that. Um, and what we're going to do now is, if you'd be kind enough to turn off your cell phones, put them on vibrate, that's okay. We do for the speaking order, and the speaking order to begin is going to be number one, David Laff. Number two, sorry. Oh, sorry, number one, my apologies. Mahid Nenshi, yes. That's all right. The order we're sitting. So there you have it there, gentlemen. So uh, we have Mahid Nenshi, Andre Chabot, Paul Hughes. Then we're going to go to David Lapp. Thank you. That's number four. Gotcha. 
Number five, he's not here. Number five is Bill Smith. Sean Baldwin, all right. Well, we'll get out. Gentlemen, there we have them. Thank you very much. Okay, now we do everything we can to allow Q&A. So here's where we're going to work this. We have found over the years that if we give opportunity for everyone to submit a question, we have a question panel seated over on your far left, shared by Terry Wong with Luann Whitmarsh and Bernie Fitterer. And what they're going to do is they're going to sort through any questions you want to submit. They're going to prioritize them, and they're going to, we're going to try to get to as many as possible. And I'll tell you why we do this. Because we've gone in the past that sometimes, and I sure wouldn't be you, Candidates or uh, audience members have a tendency to give a speech for five minutes before they get around to their question. So we want to get around to as many as possible, and this has worked out well in the past. So does anybody have any more questions they would like to submit? If you do, please just take them over to the panel right now. I don't want to take any time from this that we can avoid, and then we'll get we're going to get through as many as we possibly can. So uh, we do have an official timer. Uh, we have two timers, actually, Marilyn Wilson and Jasmine Morales. And uh, here's what we're going to do. For the opening remarks, which are three minutes, gentlemen, so you know that you can stay on time, Marilyn is going to stand at two minutes and 30 seconds and hold the gold card. So if you wanted to show us what you're going to do, you're going to hold the gold card. It's actually a dollar store bag. Thank you. Hold it up high so everybody can see it. Thank you very much. She's going to sit at two minutes and 45 seconds. In which case, she's going to grab onto the red card, and at three minutes, she's going to stand at which time they are done, and if they don't stop, you can uh, shower them with applause to make sure we keep moving on. All right. I think we have the ground rules. We, we want to get into this. We don't want to waste any time. So, ladies and gentlemen, in order, we have the microphones all set. Would you please welcome the first candidate for mayor, Mayor Mickey Nesh. Thanks very much, Brian. Thank you, Luann. Uh, let me say a very special thank you to the Calgary Leadership Forum and to the Kirby Center for hosting us. Every time I come to the Kirby Center, something good happens. So I'm thrilled uh, that we're here today, and thank you so much for that. And let's remember, too, that this election is an act of community building in a place where we have been building community for thousands of years. So today, we also honor the land on which we stand, the Blackfoot people, the Sitsika people, the Gainai, the Kenyan people, the Beaver people, the Sutina Nation, the Stony Dakota people, the Métis people, and people from every corner of this earth who for the last 150 years or so have been coming here to a place of safety, a place of welcome, and a place of opportunity. I've been here for almost seven years, and I think in that time we've achieved a number of things, and I'm very proud of that record. For example, I'm very proud of the fact that we allow low-income Calgarians, Calgarians now to participate in our community in a way that, that preserves their dignity in a way that's fair through fair entry. I'm proud that the economists this year once again suggested that this little city of 1.2 million people in the middle of the Canadian prairies is one of the top five cities in the world in which to live. I'm proud of the fact that we don't lose property taxes in any big city. I'm proud of the fact that we continue to build a city where everyone belongs, where everyone has the opportunity to live a great Canadian life. But as Brian says, there is work to be done. There's a lot of work to be done. And over the next 32 or 36 days or so, I hope that we'll have the opportunity on this table and in communities and living rooms around the city to talk about the future of our community. I'm going to be talking about what we need to build, what we need to do to build a better economy about building more infrastructure, about selling Calgary both abroad and to Calgarians, about continuing to provide the services that people need to sustain this fragile economic recovery. We're going to be talking about stronger and safer communities. We're going to be talking about investing in the sorts of things that make communities better to live in. Rec centers, fire halls, libraries, and all of those things that we need to make sure that everyone in our community, from children to senior, has the opportunity to participate. We're also going to be talking about the need to continue to build a community where every single person has a chance to live a life of dignity. In a world where anger and bitterness is growing louder and louder and louder, we need to continue to battle to ensure that every single one of us has that chance here in this community to live a great life. And we're going to speak about a smarter St. Paul. 
But it is being monitored. Councilor Chabot and I have presided over where a council where we have found $325 million in savings in the last budget cycle. We're even able to raise residential tax rates this year and cap non business tax rates because of our excellent financial management in the past. But we've got a very serious problem going forward, which we need to address. So we have to talk about a smarter city hall, stronger safety community. Brian, and Luann, uh, Dennis, uh, and of course the Kirby Center for hosting this event, and all of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules from your day to be here to participate in this uh, forum today. Um, as Mary alluded to, I've been on council for a number of years, in fact, 12, over 12 years, and in that time, I've been recognized for my attention to detail and being physically responsible. I'm running because I believe the city's traveling on a path that's not focusing on the needs of Calgarians and burdening us with too much debt. Right now, the tail is wagging the dog at City Hall in some respects. Too much direction is being provided to council from administration as they try to satisfy everyone's requests, including councillors, without the, re the required financial oversight from council. It should be the other way around. Councillors should be providing leadership and direction to administration regarding the city's greatest needs and the amount of money they have to work with. City Council has been building extravagant pet projects using property tax dollars that should have been allocated to services. The end result has been increased taxes and having to reduce services to make the finances work. A better solution would be to get more money from other orders of government to pay for less extravagant projects. Remember these numbers, 65% federal, 27% provincial, 8% municipal. These are the percentages of your tax dollars that go to each level of government. What we need is a better plan to get more of our tax dollars back into this city. And with the help of council and administration, we can set the stage to make that happen. We also need to focus on more efficient operations and reduce expend expenditures to lower the cost on Calgarians while not reducing their services. Because we need these services now more than ever. More police protection, affordable senior services, better sidewalks and road maintenance, increased park maintenance, and more efficient transit, just to name a few. Bottom line is overtaxation, poor leadership, and inefficient spending is hurting our economy, lowering the quality of life of Calgarians, even closing doors on businesses and pushing people out of their homes. If elected mayor, I'll use my knowledge and understanding of Calgary's expenses and revenue stream to help guide, guide councillors to warrant more financially responsible decisions for the well-being of Calgarians in our city. Thank you. All right, Calgary, isn't it time for a change? Aren't you tired of some of the things you've heard, even so far on this stage? Guys, it is time. It is time that a new day dawns in this city. It is far past time. Guys, there, there, there has been some quality representation at times in this city, but even quality representatives need to be switched up once in a while. We need some fresh blood at City Hall. City Hall is broken. City Hall has its head in the sand and is not representing you. We need a strong...